as always, when there's a discussion about NVIDIA, open source, and GPU drivers, there is going to be some confusion around what is actually happening when it was first announced, and also now that it's going into place. Before we go any further, let's just talk about the way NVIDIA is laid out on Linux at a high level. Yes, there are different individual components that are very important, but at a high level, there are two separate things we worry about. The Linux kernel modules and the user space drivers. Now, the kernel module, that is basically responsible for communicating with your hardware and providing a means for the user space component to cross that kernel user space barrier. Basically, think of it like a just a layer to interact between the kernel and the user space, right? Now, the user space component, this is doing all of the complicated work. This is providing your CUDA support, your Vulkan support, all of the fancy things you need to do fancy GPU things. So when things like starting with NVIDIA 560, the open source driver we made the default option for Turing or newer GPUs, or NVIDIA is moving to open source drivers, this is partially correct, but isn't referring to the thing that most people want to go open source. The only part it is talking about is that kernel space module. Now this is a very small but still very important component of the NVIDIA driver stack on Linux. I'm not saying it's bad that this is being used by default now, but it's not as big of a step as some people seem to think it is. Also, it's not an entirely new step, unlike some people seem to think it is. Now, I know it's a really long time ago, but some of you may remember NVIDIA releases open source driver kernel modules way back in May 19th, 2022. This is what we have available on the NVIDIA GitHub, the Open GPU Kernel Modules. When this happened, I did a video on this. It was great that it happened, but this is what we are talking about when we are talking about the open source kernel modules. This was released alongside the NVIDIA 515 drivers, and whilst it's being developed in a weird way, it is still open source. So the license is a mixture of MIT and when it's linked to a kernel module, then it is MIT GPLv2. It doesn't matter why it's licensed like that. It's just, that's how it's licensed. They're not developing it in an open source way. So you'll notice here, it only has 60 commits. Obviously, for something at the scale of this, 60 commits is not what's actually going on. It's being developed in a proprietary way. So it's being developed behind closed doors, and then when they have a release ready, then all of that code is being open sourced. Now you can open up issues, and you can make pull requests, and in some cases, those changes are going to be accepted. But most of the time, unless they are documentation changes, they are going to be merged behind closed doors, and then added to the next actual release. So in this case, we have the 550 driver, and anything that changed in the 550 version, it just has a big commit for 550.100 or 550.40.07, and any other release. The best way to look at it is just looking at the commit history. This is not how you develop an open source project, but it is still being open sourced. Preferably, I would like them to do actual open source development, like the Mesa project, for example, where as people add changes to the code, you can see them in the Git history. You know, the way that every single other project that's doing open source development is actually using Git. This is better than nothing, and I'm not going to say they shouldn't do this, is just not the most optimal way. From NVIDIA's perspective, it makes sense why they do it though, because they want to make sure they're not leaking things they're not allowed to leak, libraries that should be only used internally, things of that nature. I can understand what they're doing, but it doesn't mean I have to be completely happy with what they're doing. Now, as you can see from this repo, the code is available. And this is not new that the code is available, and it's not new that there are instructions on how to build the code. If you wanted to go and use this two years ago, you had the option to go and do so. Now, doing it this way was not the intended way of using your NVIDIA drivers. The intended way 
is using the proprietary kernel module and the proprietary user space driver. Most distros are packaging it in this way. There are some like Gen2 because Gen2 has a bunch of build configuration options, which had the option to go and use this instead. But most you had to go actively out of your way to make use of the open source kernel modules. And this is what is going to be changing. NVIDIA transitions fully towards open source GPU kernel modules. NVIDIA GPUs share a common driver architecture and capability set. The same driver for your desktop or laptop runs the world's most advanced AI workloads in the cloud. It's been incredibly important for us to get it just right. Two years on, we've added equivalent or better application performance with our open source GPU kernel modules and added substantial new capabilities. We're now at a point where transitioning fully to the open source GPU kernel modules is the right move. And we're making that change in the upcoming 560 driver release. Now you might think, oh, okay, if this is the new way to do things with NVIDIA GPUs, I guess it's time to just go migrate over and everything is just going to work. Well, hold right up there, because whether or not you need these kernel modules, and whether or not you can use these kernel modules, very much depends on the kind of NVIDIA GPU you actually have. Now, unless you run a university, a data center, or for some other reason, are buying $30,000 plus NVIDIA GPUs, this first one isn't gonna be super relevant to you. For cutting edge platforms such as NVIDIA Grasshopper or NVIDIA Blackwell, you must use the open source GPU kernel modules. The proprietary drivers are unsupported on these platforms. I can't imagine many of you are buying things like the GH200. If you happen to have one and you spent more than a car on a GPU, like a nice car on a GPU, um, yeah. Keep that in mind. Moving way down to something quite a bit more reasonable for newer GPUs from the Turing, Ampere, Ada Lovelace, or Hopper architectures, NVIDIA recommends switching to the open source GPU kernel modules. You don't have to use them, but you probably should. So Turing is the 20 and 16 series. Remember 16, it came after 20 because NVIDIA, Ampere is the 30 series, and then Lovelace is the 40 series. Hopper is another one of those compute architectures that most of you probably aren't touching. In other words, if your GPU is released after 2018, you probably should just use the open source GPU kernel modules. But what about everyone else? Because I know there is a lot of people out there still running the 10 series cards. I know there's people out there running like 7 series or even older than that. For older GPUs from the Maxwell, Pascal, or Volta architectures, the open source GPU kernel modules are not compatible with your platform. Continue to use the NVIDIA proprietary driver. Even though prices have come down from their absolute peak, I know for a lot of you that buying a GPU is incredibly expensive, and years ago you bought a 9 or a 10 series GPU, and it worked perfectly fine, and you wish NVIDIA just kept supporting it. And it would be nice if they kept doing so. But at some point, they were going to drop support, and this is where it happens. Now, another case probably not important to most of you is mixed deployments with older and newer GPUs in your system. So say you have a Ada Lovelace GPU and then a Maxwell GPU for whatever reason at the same time. In these cases, continue to use the proprietary driver. Now, if you're using a mixed series of GPUs and they are both part of the supported open source driver, I'm pretty sure then go with the open source one. Now, don't worry. If thinking is just way too hard for you and you don't want to work out whether or not your GPU is actually supported by the open source kernel module, NVIDIA has a solution. They have an installation helper script. That script being called NVIDIA Driver Assistant, and it should be packaged on most distros. On the other hand, you probably don't need to really think about it anyway, because yes, there is going to be packages on the distros, and they also provide the package names on major distros out there. But, 
on a lot of distros, you're probably not going to need to worry about it with a new install because I would imagine fairly shortly installers are going to be updated to automatically do this detection anyway and just decide for you what you're going to need and just automatically install the one that just makes the most sense. Whilst that'll be the case for the friendly distros like Ubuntu, like Pop OS, and things of that nature, obviously not going to be the case for everything. In the case of Arch Linux, for example, you can just go and install the wrong drivers if you want to. Arch is not going to make it easy for you. You have to know what you're doing. Now, Arch does have an NVIDIA Open Kernel Module package. They added it to the main repos not that long after this announcement was made. So I would imagine they probably were having discussions behind closed doors just to make sure it's available. It is set to conflict with the NVIDIA module, so you can't accidentally install both of them at the same time, which is very nice. Thank you for that because someone's going to try to do so if you don't have that there. Now, in the case of Gen 2, I mentioned they already had things set up to go and use the Open Kernel module anyway, and absolutely nothing has been changed there. You can still go and do that. It's still here. And if you happen to be a Gen 2 user, you know how the Gen 2 world works. My suggestion is if your distro is not listed here and you're not really sure about what the package is called on your specific distro, go check your distro documentation. Go check your distro forums. If nobody has answered the question before, go and ask the question. And if somebody knows the answer and if there actually is a package available, someone is going to hopefully be able to direct you towards it. And if there's not a package available, Hopefully that puts in the eyes of the distro developers and they can work on getting that supported. Now this is only a bit confusing in the short term whilst there is still a need to have a choice. When we get to the point where the 40 series GPUs, those are the old GPUs. Those GPUs had been out for 10 years. The modern GPU is the 9000 series or 10,000 series or NVIDIA resets the numbering again and People are talking about how they bought their 4060 10, 12 years ago, and the 4060 is good enough and they don't want to upgrade. When we get to that point, then there's not going to need to be any discussion about what you should install because by then, every GPU going forward is going to either require the open source kernel module or optionally be able to use the proprietary one. But if the open source one is just as good, most distros are going to default to installing that anyway. Now, like I touched on at the start, this is only talking about the Linux kernel module aspect. You still need to use proprietary NVIDIA firmware. If you want to use the core NVIDIA drivers, you need to still use the NVIDIA proprietary user space drivers. Also, this doesn't make installing NVIDIA drivers any easier because you still need to go out of your way to make sure you have that additional kernel module installed. It's not something that has been upstreamed. I hope at some point in the future, NVIDIA can do that upstreaming. They develop it in an open source manner. They can get it maintained or maybe someone else comes along and develops that kernel module separately that actually can be upstreamed so you don't have to worry about installing a goddamn kernel module anymore. But that's for the future. If you're an end user, basically the only thing that changes is if you were installing the packages manually, now the package name is a bit different. Nothing else really changes for you. With that being said, if you do care about what's going on in the background, if you do care about the code, if you do care about open source, this is a small, but still a step in the correct direction and a step towards open source NVIDIA support. It's a long way behind where we are with AMD. It's nowhere near that. But it's a step in that direction. Ultimately, what I would love to see is like with AMD, like with the Mesa project, have the entire user space component open sourced. Have it so it's easy to see, it's easy to work on, and not just open sourced where you have the current version, but developed in an open source way. I know that's never going to happen, 
whilst we still have things like HDMI, because the HDMI forum doesn't want newer versions of HDMI to be open sourced, which is why newer AMD cards don't have support for newer HDMI standards. Look, if that has to happen, I will accept an HDMI blob. Everything else open source, just a blob to support HDMI. But it's probably not going to happen either. Give NVIDIA the props they deserve, even if it's a very small case. Give them just like a single clap. Maybe a single clap sounds really condescending, actually. They kind of deserve a single clap. NVIDIA, you know, is NVIDIA. This. <laughs> Look, NVIDIA is still NVIDIA. That's how we're going to end it. But it's better than nothing. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is an improvement? Even if it's a small one, still an improvement. Or do you want to see them do better before you give them any praise whatsoever? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libera Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm still buying AMD.